Hi, I'm Daniel. Hi, I'm Abel. We bring you a special message of assurance and hope this Christmas. This Christmas will be very different for all of us because of the pandemic. But in the commemoration of the birth of the Savior of the world, there is a far greater message of salvation and hope that trumps the fear and the despair that the COVID-19 pandemic has brought. Christmas is a story of hope. And hope is something that we've lost as a nation. Our statistics indicate that one in 10 people will suffer from depression during their lifetime. Last year, there were 5,691 suicides in, in England and Wales. That was 321 higher than the previous year. 4% of children within the UK are suffering from depression or anxiety. 9.8 million working days are lost due to depression. And of course, the situation has been significantly amplified by COVID. Um, truly, hope is one of the scarcest commodities of our generation. But this Christmas, we want to bring you a message of hope. And why is that? It's because that's what Christmas is really all about. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter, 20, chapter 1, verse 21, we read of Mary. It says, she, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. The story goes like this. All of humanity is lost, alienated from God, our creator, through sin. But God decides to send his son down to earth on a rescue mission to redeem mankind back unto himself by laying his life down as a sacrifice for our sins on the cross. Christmas commemorates the birth of Jesus and it reminds us that no matter how dark and miserable life may seem to be, there is still hope. There's hope for you, there's hope for your family, there's hope for our nation, and of course there's hope for this generation. In John's Gospel chapter 3 verse 16 it says, For this is how God loved the world, he gave his one and only son, that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. For the same reason he allowed Jesus to be born at a time when his people, Israel, were under the oppression of the Roman Empire. Because you see, the concern of God was far greater than the Roman oppression. The coming of Jesus Christ gave us access to a kingdom that is far greater in which there is righteousness, peace, and joy. So, look away from COVID. The blessed kingdom of God is at hand, it's right near you, and you can enter into it and enjoy the blessings that Jesus brought if you will repent and believe the gospel. So how can we find hope in this time of national crisis? The answer is simple, receive the Savior. If you follow the Christmas story through, you'll come across two categories of people, those like Herod and the religious leaders of the day who rejected the Savior, and those like the wise men, the shepherds and the common people who received him. John's Gospel chapter 1 verse 4 says, In him is life, and that the life is light. Both life and light are symbolic of hope, and when we receive the Savior and accept him as our own personal redeemer, he floods our lives with his life, with his light, and with his hope. It's so important because so many people are looking for hope in other places. In times of crisis, some turn to alcohol, others to drugs. Some try to drown their sorrows in a sea of pleasure and entertainment, only to find that none of these things can bring true security or lasting hope. Why? Because true hope can only be found in Christ. He's the central figure of Christmas, and he wants to fill your life with true hope today. So how do we receive the Savior? It's as simple as A, B, C, A. Acknowledge that you are without his hope. Admit that currently you don't have that hope and peace in your heart. B. Believe in Christ. Put your trust in him and in the hope that he offers through his death, his resurrection, and his suffering. C. Confess your sins to God in prayer. Turn away from the things that you know are wrong and say, Lord, I choose to follow you. Scripture says in John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 12, that as many as receive him, to them he gives the right to become the children of God. He brings them close as family members and births new life in them. This hope isn't ordinary, it's supernatural, it's eternal. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that everything will suddenly become perfect because you've accepted the Savior, but it does give you an assurance that even in the darkest times, he's right there with you. And of course, once this life is over, you have the hope of spending the whole of eternity with him. What an amazing hope. Was Jesus really a healer? Yes, he was, and he still is. 
and he has given power to all his disciples to heal all manner of diseases. Matthew chapter 10 verse 1. So if you are feeling unwell, this is your moment. We bring you the blessing of the kingdom of God. Get ready to be healed in Jesus' name. So as we've heard, Jesus really was a healer. And not only was he a healer, he still heals today. And I just want to mention um, if everything that we've been saying, if it has struck a chord with you, if it has resonated with you, this video, we just want to say a quick prayer with you so that you can receive that hope that we've been talking about. Um, so I'm just going to bow our heads and I'm just going to lead you in a quick prayer. Just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I acknowledge right now that I don't have this hope. But Lord Jesus, I know that you came to provide it. That was what Christmas was all about. And Lord Jesus, I just ask right now that Lord, you would fill my heart with your hope. Lord, I believe that you came, that you died on the cross for me and that through your death and your resurrection, I can have hope. And right now I want to receive it. Lord, I turn away from everything that I know is wrong. I confess my sins to you and I turn from sin and I choose to follow you. Thank you, Lord, because I know that through what you did, I can be saved. I can have hope in Jesus' name. Now, if you pray that prayer, I believe that the Lord has touched your life. And from this point forward, you are a brand new person. If you find a good local church to attend, or if you want to reach out to us, you can find our details at the bottom of this video. And we can look at seeing how we can keep, keep in touch and send you some other encouraging materials as well. We now just want to say a quick prayer for anybody who's under the weather, whether it's yourself or a family member or a colleague at work or somebody else that you know. We also want to pray for our nation as well, that God would bring hope and peace to this nation once again. So let's bow our heads as we pray for all of these needs and for our nation. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for the hope that you bring to us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because through you, there is true hope. And Lord, we just want to pray for everybody who is watching or connected in some way with this video that Lord is under the weather, is sick, whether it's through COVID or through some other sickness. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you'd stretch forth your hand right now and heal them. We ask, Lord, that all the pain, all the suffering, all of the, Lord, illness and ailments that are so prevalent, that Lord Jesus, in your mercy, you would heal, deliver and save in Jesus' name. We pray for our nation as well and for the crisis that we're facing right now. We ask, dear Lord, that you would stretch out your hand and in your mercy, you take away all of the pain and the suffering that has become so prevalent and bring us restoration, healing and health once again in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year in advance. God bless you.